sponsored by Dennis K. Corky, MD, director of the Corky Medical Group, located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray, Pennsylvania. For more information or to make an appointment, call 724-942-3002. That's 724-942-3002 for Dennis J. Corky, MD. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to AIM Impact on Your Health. AIM Impact on Your Health, where every day our goal is to have you learn at least one thing to help you live better and longer. AIM Impact on Your Health, heard each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney, and I'm with you each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9. AIM Impact on Your Health, where each day you'll find current medical news, knowledgeable guests, and fascinating health topics, and of course, where we do encourage you to call in to join in. Today, uh, well, today is a Friday get em up out of town version of the show. As we normally like to do each and every Friday, we'll let you uh, call up, if you should have a mind to, uh, to ask a question or make any comment you'd like to at all. Uh, 412-825-6262, as has been the case and for always, is the number to do just that. So um, I've got a number of things you'll be seeing in a moment I'd like to bring to your attention. About half past the hour, we'll bring Jerry Singleton on board with us uh, to talk about some issues surrounding uh, MCG testing, a thing we've become very famous for and has allowed me to meet many of you that heretofore I have not had the pleasure to do so. Um, anyway, uh, throughout the course of all of it, and whether it's MCG related or have to do with the topics I discussed, at any point, you could call up and ask a question about any of the matters well, that we've previously discussed, uh, uh, discussed on other shows or that you may want to have in an up-and-coming show. Anything on your mind, okay with me. That number, once again, 412-825-6262. Now, uh, today, what uh, I'll do is uh, I'm going to take a short break right after going over the schedule. Then when I come back, I need to get this off my chest uh, uh, one of my emails, and I'm on the Joe Mercola email list, like many of you are, and if you are, then you had to have uh, had this catch your attention. How about this, coming from Joe? And when I see it, it absolutely uh, makes me become focused on the issue. He says, there are eight foods that you should never, ever eat at all, ever, ever, ever. And uh, I think he means it. And uh, I'm going to bring those the attention to the eight foods that he talks about and maybe get the uh, idea behind why he is so adamant about those eight foods. And after I read the uh, email and the articles that came along with it, I'm in complete agreement with him. You'll see what I mean. The eight foods that you should never eat are going to be coming to you right after that first. Uh, if you want to get a pencil and paper, as you normally do when you listen to this show, be ready to write, and I'll give you every bit of information I can on the subject. And, of course, as I mentioned, after about half past the hour, we'll go find uh, Jerry Singleton, who is engaged in some activity early on, or we'd have brought him on sooner. Now, next week, a lot of festivities around here. You've heard all of the excitement building up. You know, you, you get to that crescendo moment. We're almost there. Uh, we got Dr. Ed Kondrat coming to town uh, to have his uh, eye treatment seminar, this time done right in my office. This is going to start on Monday morning, 8.30, bright and sharp uh, at 8.30, uh, and uh, continue for the first three days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We right now have, and I believe the treatment issue is now, it's closed off because uh, he normally likes to hold it to 10 patients only. I understand we're at 11, uh, which is very good. And uh, if you have a mind to become potentially involved, with maybe not this particular eye treatment seminar, but you'd like to find out maybe an up-and-coming seminar if you want to be involved in any of those. And I guarantee you, Dr. Conjure will be coming back. He usually comes back about every three months. But uh, you may want to take us up on the second kind of seminar we're holding next week, and that's on Monday. And that's going to be in my office from 6 to 8 o'clock in the evening, where in an unthreatening, complete uh freedom-filled environment, you can come and meet Dr. Kondrat. You can come meet me. 
Uh, we'll have some words to, just, uh, to describe oh, some pertinent issues that normally hit us for that day. Dr. Condrard always talks about the 10 tips, the 10 tips to preserve your um, eye uh, vision and, and, and eye health. And then it's an opportunity for your own personal questions to come out with respect to if you feel uh, you might want to consider it sometime in the future becoming a part of the treatment seminars. Um, it is a good way in a non-threatening environment to get some information that can allow you to make that decision, help you make that decision, and become potentially involved in one of the up-and-coming treatment seminars, uh, not just this one, unfortunately, uh, but that may be exactly what you need, a little bit of encouragement to consider your involvement in an up-and-coming one. I know uh, after having Ed come on the show so often and opening up the phone calls to you, you do respond with your own eye issues. So many of you out there have such potentially serious ones, and I think the common thread that I, I feel it's palpable, folks, as I listen uh, on the other end to these discussions as you're posing your questions to Dr. Kondrat is that whatever conventional treatment you're receiving, you're not happy. It's just not working out. You have stagnated, and I think the phrase which is frequently used is that this is as, uh, something like this. This is as good as it gets. I can't do anything else. There's nothing else to be done. And these are words that if you have an affliction, you never do want to hear. And I think these are words that really uh, rarely ever roll off the lips of Dr. Edward Kondrak. His approaches are completely unique. They're different. That's why if there's nothing working for you, you absolutely might want to consider this in the future. Anyway, we're going to have him here 9, 10, and 11. By the way, on the 12th, uh, you know who you are, I think. Uh, for those who have participated in the previous treatment seminars, you should well know that every time uh, Dr. Kondrak comes to town, he puts a day aside to reevaluate you and your progress. And, of course, that will be conducted on the 12th, which is on Thursday. So it's a full week of activity around here. In keeping with that, I hope you understand, on Monday morning, we will not do, I will not do, I really can't do a live show. Uh, we're having a whole group of people come into the office who've never been here before. There's going to need to be some organization and direction out here. And so on Monday, just Monday now, it's the only day I'm not going to do a live show, what I've decided to do is repeat the show that we did on April 15th uh, when we had Dr. David Brownstein with us uh, talking about, well, thyroid conditions. I label it thyroid part one. Oddly enough, in the same week on Friday, and it work, it'll work out just fine, David Brownstein does return live and in the flesh to discuss thyroid part two. So I thought it was in good keeping to have the repeat show come up on Monday so that I can help uh, check in and become familiar with the 11 participants in the eye treatment seminar. Uh, it would just be too much to think that uh, it would go smoothly. Uh, probably would go very smoothly without my fingers in it, but uh, I would be too nervous wondering what would be going on outside my office door. So Monday's repeat with David Brownstein from the 15th. Some good phone calls came from you, the listeners, uh, that day. I'm sure there's going to be some good ones, by the way, coming in on Friday when David returns. Now, on Wednesday, and even though we are doing the seminar, uh, I would never pass up the opportunity to be uh, here in a live format with you to have our guest of Wednesday with us. Of course, he's known by many names. Uh, he is the king of oregano. I'm certainly... Without saying anything further, I'm sure you know our guest for Wednesday is the, it will be Dr. Cass Ingram. Uh, he hadn't emailed me yet. I don't know what's on his mind. Uh, it doesn't really matter. The man is so knowledgeable in most issues regarding an unconventional approach to the treatment of a host of conditions. Uh, Cass will have a, a good run with us on uh, Wednesday. Now, in the following week, and uh, once again, you've got to make a change, folks. Here it is with the Freedom of Choice in Cancer Therapy Group up here in uh, Butler. Well, they didn't change the town. That's about the only thing they didn't change. Here it is. Um, what matches up is, yes, it will be on the third Thursday of the month. That stays the same. However, the venue is changed, has changed, uh, from some conflict of which I'm really not aware, uh, the 
Bayesian is uh, conflicted. They cannot hold the speaker up there at the at the uh, Days Inn on the third Thursday, but right around, literally around the corner, as you pass the Days Inn, the next right turn you can make is at a shopping center, and there's a road right at that turn uh, that that goes alongside the shopping center, and about a mile down the road you'll encounter what's known as the South Butler Fire Hall. Um, so you'll want to be um, uh, aware that the venues change. The time remains the same. It's 7 o'clock. The guest is one none other than Dr. Richard Versendahl, an icon in the chiropractic field, but with a special skill, one that he's uh, been able to teach many others, and it might be something that you'd be very interested in learning yourself. By the way, there is a special request for those clinicians out there who are listening to me. Uh, Dr. Versendahl offers a, uh, a discount for future uh, courses offered by him on this this um, uh, technique that he has perfected called CRA. That stands for Contact Reflex Analysis, and that will be the discussion up there on the third Thursday of the month. Not a day's in. You're going to have to be in the South Butler Fire, Fire Hall. If you have a GPS, plug in 174 Old Plank Road. Come on now, that's an easy 174 Old Plank Road, and uh, your GPS will bring you there, and you won't have to worry about looking for that right turn. It'll just, well, look, look here, my, the one in my, my dashboard says, right turn up ahead, turn right in 100 yards. You'll, you'll, you'll hear that also. Okay, that's, uh, as that shapes up, that's fine. And, and, but, oh, hey, can't forget, in keeping with what we normally like to do, uh, in the uh, Freedom of Choice selection of the month, Dr. Richard Versendahl will be with us on the 16th. And uh, he'll titillate you a bit with the power behind this uh, interesting modality called CRA. And uh, you'll want to take a listen to that and hopefully be intrigued enough that you'll actually make the trip up there on Thursday to the Butler Group. And I hope, uh, well, I always like to see uh, uh, supporting the Freedom of Choice Group. I hope you enjoy uh, being there uh, with us on, on Monday the 16th and then with them on the 19th but at the South Butler Fire Hall on the Plank Road. Um, we had Susan Smith as our guest on Wednesday. We've already booked her for a return. By the way, it's, I, I promise you it really happened. She said, oh, she doesn't know what to talk about. Now that's a switch. If Susan says she doesn't know what to talk about, I'm I'm scared because this woman is never at a loss for words. Anyway, she's going to be a return guest of ours on the very first day of June. That's a Wednesday. And so far, that's as far ahead as my schedule will take me. And uh, you are now up to speed and up to date on up-and-coming activities around here in Toto. Okay, let's do this. And we are going to take a short break. And uh, go away and come back. If you have pencil and paper in hand, is that what you'd like to do? Uh, Germacola says, and I think I need to bring them in the message to you, there are eight foods you absolutely should never, ever eat to find out why. And by the way, there's a little twist here that I think has a special relevance to the listeners of this audience, at least. Be back in a moment. This is Dennis J. Courtney, MD. Have you become confused about how best to manage your health? It's no wonder. It seems that every time you turn on the television or radio, another expert has yet another suggestion for you to follow that seems to be reasonable enough, but no matter how dutifully you follow the instruction, it just doesn't quite produce the results that you are looking for. If this confusion sounds familiar to you, give us a call at the Center for Complementary Health, where we'll make some sense of the confusion based on a blending of traditional and alternative medicine that we've been perfecting over the last seven years. We offer metabolic nutrition testing, immune system repair, natural hormone replacement therapy, chelation therapy, cutting edge allergy correction, and a host of other safe and effective alternative therapies. Dennis J. Courtney, MD, is located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray. Phone 724-942-3002. Have you been to the doctor lately? What's the big top of your complaint list? 
Even if your doctor asks you what you eat, the recommended five servings of fruits and vegetables a day is a dream in your busy schedule. What if you learned of a product five years in the formulation that delivers five servings of fruits and minerals in just one ounce? That's right, it's through the spirit. The blessings of through the spirit are now formulated into a delicious whole fruit parade product rich in antioxidants and minerals. Your health is more than just a test result. It's a balance of physical, spiritual, and emotional factors. You work regularly to strengthen your faith, but through the spirit, help cover your nutritional needs in a convenient and cost-effective ounce a day. Call 1-800-442-3793 for a special promotional offer. Through the spirit, a blessing for your good health. Through the spirit, five servings of fruits and minerals with no added sugars. That's one 800 442-3793 for your good health. Call them now, 1-800-442-3793. Hey, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back once again to AM Impact on Your Health. Heard here on KHB 620 each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney with you on this Friday version of the show. It is, as we normally like to keep it, a get em up out-of-town version of the show where we will open it up to you if you have a mind to give us a call and, and really set the agenda as you'd like to have it today. Questions, comments of any type are welcome. That number to participate, 412-825-6262. That's 412-825-6262. Now, um, I'm always in the blogosphere, and I normally have to search high and low for um, information I enjoy bringing to you because I take the time to do that searching. Many of you do, too, also, and you can bring up information that I haven't even been able to find, and uh, I really appreciate when that happens. This one was a little easier than most uh, because I get constant emails, and I'm on the email list, I guess, for Dr. Joe McCullough. It does a great job with his website. Um, and uh, most of these I just read and put aside because I don't feel they're really a big splash. This one is a large splash. Because uh, when Joe says there are eight foods you should never, ever eat, um, I'm interested, and it certainly has my attention. Maybe it has yours, too, as to what these foods might be. And uh, when you dialed up, uh, as I did uh, last evening, uh, my most, one of my most recent emails, because I get quite a few in a week from Joe, uh, it became really evident and extremely relevant to this radio show, at least, to bring this to your attention, uh, because I can see exactly why Joe says this is so, and if Joe says it is, then it is, as you well know here, being a Pittsburgh listener. Um, but the tact he has taken as he's moved to talking about uh, the GMO issue and put it in a way that uh, brought some new insights to my attention, ones I had never thought about before. So let's go down this GMO road and find out, by the way, that's for, that stands for genetically modified. And um, we would always have said, as you would always already know, that this is best to avoid, it really is best to avoid anything that is genetically modified. And so, uh, with that in mind, here's what Joe says. Number one, he says, at this stage of the game, if the almost all crops of these substances are completely genetically modified, he says the soybean crop, that's 95% of that crop is developed from GMO seeds. So this has nothing to do with cross-pollination, and traveling, as I know, there's, there's another problem that goes hand in hand with the, the GMO issue. But 95 percent of all soybean crops are coming in the United States come from genetically modified foods, which are grown from genetically modified seeds. So from the get-go, 95 percent of the crops immediately are suspect. Talking about corn, we've always mentioned it before. We're going to be mentioning it again here in a mo another moment. At this stage of the game, uh, Joe mentions 90% of all corn crops in the United States are grown from genetically modified seeds. He mentions two other crop lines, which are heavily laden. Doesn't give me percentages, but uh, says you've got to be careful with these two. One's the cotton crop, the other the canola crop. And um, 
I don't know the percentages, maybe not, of course, but uh, if you don't have the uh, seeds alone, you always have the capability of farmland setting side by side and between bees and winds and everything else and, and wash-offs, uh, the potential for contamination remains there. Whether or not the seeds themselves are genetically modified, there's always the potential to have that contamination. Now, he mentions, Joe does, that genetically altered uh, foods can and could pose risk with serious health and environmental um, um, consequences associated with them. Um, the problem is that we, in a way, are never going to know. And I think this was an insight uh, brought to me that I had rumored before, uh, but now, concretely in front of me, I think I need to pass it on to you. We feel that, uh, that it's almost a certainty that there are going to be health and environmental risks associated with the consumption of genetically altered foods. And the reason, however, that you're never going to know for sure, not necessarily if, but I think you can pretty much take it to the bank that the that, that genetically modified uh, does pose a risk. But in terms of to what degree that risk is, I think the companies themselves, two companies are mentioned, the one I'm very familiar with, you've heard many times, Monsanto is the name of a company that um, uh, certainly started this whole ball of wax going in the 1990s. Another company I had not heard of called of Syngenta, S-Y-N-G-E-N-T-E-G-E-N-T-A. Monsanto and Syngenta are the two companies that are involved with the genetic modification issue. And the reason why you won't ever know about to what degree of harm, to what degree of risk, health and environmental is that, and here's the catch-all, it, it, these are patented. And as a patent, the person who has developed the patent is able to determine how their product is used, if it can be researched at all. And as of now, they have not let out these seeds for any research projects whatsoever, and they are fully protected by the federal government in doing so because of the patent laws out there. They have created new foods, folks. I think the term has been used in the past called Franken foods, if you know what I mean. And these Franken foods are protected by our patent laws because by them splicing genes and, and having interactions between the DNA of one species of plant with another, um, they have created virtually something new. And they claim they own it and various um, Court rulings throughout the entire country have backed them up on it, and so it's only if they feel that they want to have further research done, and as at this time, they do not. At least that's the best, I've, the best uh, inclination I get from reading the Joe article. Um, the reasons that they give, because they've been asked this many times, you can understand why. There's quite a bit of controversy about that, and they go, well, no, we're not having our seeds being used for research in any way. And the reason why we're not going to do this, they've given, has been uh, essentially two. Number one, these companies say it could make them vulnerable to lawsuits. Well, now, there you go. You better believe that the lawsuits might very well come in the form of a class action. And, um, <laughs> and uh, to think that they would be participating in their own demise by having research, then, well, you can just imagine that there will be no research on seeds for the legal reason anyway. And uh, they also say that if they were to have this research become available, it would give their competitors, I guess other farmers who aren't growing genetic crops, genetically modified crops at all, he says that they, or that the company say it would be uh, giving their competitors an unfair advantage. So there you have it all wrapped up nice and legal-like by U.S. patent laws instead of the USDA or anything else. Now, what happens during this genetic, the modific this genetic modification process essentially are two things. One is that these seeds, the GMO seeds, uh, have had their DNA altered so that either, number one, they will resist dying from pesticides. 
So the, GN, the DNA of these, uh, these new crops, frankenfood crops, um, have had their DNA adjusted so as to be able to withstand tremendous amounts of pesticides so as to prevent any pesticidic uh, crop invasion and their yield will be much better, you see. But therein lies the, ha the catch. Um, by having the modification that allows them to resist dying from pesticides, these products are drenched. They are laden. They literally float in a sea of pesticides because if the, you've only spliced the gene in order to resist the pesticide, then you should feel comfortable about just dousing these products, these crops, with as much pesticide as you can manage in order to make certain that the reason that the splicing was done is actually going to have an opportunity to work on your behalf. And so that's why you don't see those worms anymore in the corn, do you? Okay, just not there. Nothing's there. It is completely devoid of any microbial activity at all. The second thing that happens uh, sometimes in genetic modification is they end up creating a brand new strain of food that actually um, derives its own internal pesticide and in so doing it makes you a pesticide producing organism. It's one or it's the other and you can see how uh, in so doing that these now can become uh, something that you're to be alerted to always avoid. So this whole conversation got started by discussing the eight foods that you should never eat. So now here comes your list folks if you have a pencil you got a paper and you do take notes, I know you take them. Here come the eight foods that Joe says don't ever eat in any way, shape, or form. Uh, number one, soy and any of its derivatives. Number two, corn and consequently any of its derivatives. And you're going to find that, the, that the, uh, if the type of foods that you're talking about are processed foods, then you're not getting around. The, it, absolutely, just consider that it was genetically modified product that was being included in that in that particular substance that you're taking, you're buying at the store if it's a processed food. Cotton seed. Now I was thinking about well, where the heck, um, how do we get cotton seed in our food supply? Well, it's found, and uh, and I can recall, yes, absolutely, it's found in the vegetable cooking oil. Same thing with the fourth food that you should never eat, which is canola, obviously found in canola oil. Absolutely avoid these, so says Joe. Uh, number five, sugar from sugar beets. Number six, Hawaiian papaya. Number seven, some varieties of zucchini. And number eight, and I have to admit, I've never heard of it, but I can understand how the, the um, term pretty much describes what it should look like. It's called the crook and neck, crook neck, <laughs> crook neck squash. These are the eight. Never to eat. Soy, corn, cottonseed, canola, sugar from sugar beets, Hawaiian papaya, some varieties of zucchini, and the crook neck squash. Now, the only way that you can eat these foods, according to Joe, and this would be accurate, is if they are consumed organically, if they are coming from organically certified um, crops, organically certified. This means it would have to bear, and I think you can trust, uh, we have to trust something, right? That right? And I think you can trust a USDA label. USDA certified organic means by its very definition, one of the tenets, one of the premises to be able to bear that sticker is to know that the product comes from seeds that are not genetically modified to begin with. So there's the place where you can start. You need to be looking on um, labels, and I think you need to be um, looking for the only label that really counts because in the rules and regulations, the USDA organic label is the one that bears the full force and brunt, brunt of the full force and brunt of the law behind it, 
and makes it uh, pretty much an, an unviolatable issue. Uh, you can't be messing around with the feds. Well, you can, uh, but you will get burnt, and farmers should pay for the additional labeling and pay for what additional processing and the yield diminishment that comes along with using um, uh, the um, organic seeds uh, because the yield will be less. The product won't be as pretty looking, um, and it won't last as long on any shelf of any type. So to, to get that advantage, uh, an advantage, by the way, that I was growing up was just the way it was um, in the 50s and 60s. Um, we really didn't have any uh, genetically modified anything, and uh, certainly many many fields could survive without use of pesticides and did. Okay, this now brings me to the, the oh one thing about buying this stuff. What about these codes? I'm sure you've heard of them before, but uh, just to give you some extra ability to know what you might be holding in your hand, or maybe what you like to put down that's in your hand, real quick for fear of contaminating you. Uh, when it comes to the stickers that the, the um, these products have to bear, especially the fresh food, the variety of uh, fruits and vegetables, conventionally grown will have a four-digit code, four digits. And it can start with literally any number. Um, and as long as it's a four-digit code, it meets the requirement as put down by the uh, USDA and it would be uh, indicative of a conventionally grown. And conventional means that if it's conventionally grown and if it's one of those eight foods, they are not to be consumed. They are the eight foods you should never consume. Organic, I think you do know, um, uh, is a five-digit coded item. The first of the digits will be the digit number nine. So as you're going through and you see that sticker on the food source, look for that number nine leading it off, and then count the digits. There better be five, and I get a feeling that they might get snookered um, by looking. And there could be four-digit codes that could begin with nine, and still be legal, so be careful there. The third category is the actual labeling, labeling of something that is genetically modified, and that has to do with a five-digit code that begins with the number eight. If it's got the eight at the front of five digits, you got a hot item. <laughs> you got a hot item in your hand, folks. Put it down. You don't want that one. That would meet the test of, if it isn't on my list of the eight, it certainly is something to be avoided. And by law, it has to be published. It should be on there. And uh, I would hope that you would uh, use the coding system that I just told you about. There's one little uh, hitch here, one little thing that I think should finally be brought to your attention, and I'm going to answer this phone call, and that is uh, there are plenty of markets out there. We're heading into that season where... The issue of um, organic food, I mean, they claim that it's an organic food, and they don't, and they are not using these uh, stickers from the USDA. You're going to have to really know the source. Let's just say that the um, firehouse market um, down in the Strip District, because I know the rigorous rules that are, have to be followed and that are checked upon by the group themselves, even though there may not be a sticker on those items, it is my intention and my impression that to say that they are safe and they are not genetically modified, even though they may not bear the sticker on them, they're checked out. You cannot be selling product on the premises uh, that is claiming to be organic and not to be organic at all. Now, I've got a caller out there. We'll come back in a minute finishing up on one final item with this. But, uh, caller, what's on your mind? Come on ahead. Uh, good morning, Dr. Courtney. Hi. I just had a quick question. Uh, one of the foods that you said to avoid was sugar beets. Are you talking about the beets like that you get out of a garden? Because I eat them every day, and I, I had no idea. Ah, well, I am exactly talking about this, the beets you get out of the garden. If the seeds that you're using in your garden aren't labeled organic, they have to be labeled organic. Okay. And so if they are not labeled, then they are to be considered and I'm sure they taste wonderful, <laughs> uh, um, and they look great, but uh, you may be finding that the reason they look so good is that they might be genetically modified. You've got to follow the rule. 
Look for the seed. Uh huh. <laughs> hey, they find out, and 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 by purchasing these seeds, they have to be labeled as the conventional or or GMO uh, modified, uh, or they have to carry the label of organic uh, of, of an organically um, certified label of USDA. And if they do carry that label, then you got the right stuff. So just check. I got a feeling if you haven't checked. Uh, I'm just fearful that you might have purchased the wrong kind of seeds. Check. Yeah, I don't think they're organic. I, I really don't think they are. Sometimes it's hard to get the organic seeds. Well, there you go. If you know that it's t t tough to get, um, maybe on the commercial market, maybe out there in the stores, uh, seeds, there should be. Now, I, I'm not a big seed person. I, I have to defer to faith. Faith is really faithful on this matter. But uh, you should be able, without much difficulty, to locate a source that has and handles genetically, non-genetically modified or otherwise stated organically um, certified seeds. So from the source, you should, if you're going to put a garden in your backyard and you're going to want to eat healthy, then you better make certain that you're using the healthy seeds to, to begin with or you're going to be deluded into thinking all is well when in fact it is not. I'm glad I could pass it on. Thanks to Joe. Okay. Okay. Bye. Absolutely. Yeah, folks, I think you really have to take that leap. All right, let's do this. going to take a short break. Uh, when we come back, uh, I've got one final item to bring up with this seed issue. I'm also going to try to find Jerry. If I can, I'll bring him aboard, too. Uh, you may call up and have a question or a comment for one, too. 8256262 is the number. I'll be listening for your knock on the door. Hey, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Michael back once again to aim impact on your health. Heard here on KHP 620 well, each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney with you on a Friday version of the show. Yes, it is a get em up out of time version of the show. You can call in to ask a question or make a comment. The number, as always, is, of course, 412-825-6262. That's 412-825-6262. We've been talking about the uh, eight foods that, according to Jeremy Mercola, uh, you should never, ever eat. And, of course, it comes down and is reduced to the one common denominator that all hate have in common with one another, and that is 
they all can potentially come, and the greatest percentage of cases are coming from genetically modified seeds, meaning that there are health issues, health risks, environmental risks to them, and uh, the only way to avoid uh, the issue of being harmed by them, because you're not going to find out from any research. Nobody's going to do the research. The seeds are patented, as I've revealed to you. The company do not allow any research to be done, and I've got a feeling they're going to keep it that way as long as they're legally able to do so. Um, you can only protect yourself by making certain that you purchase um, organically labeled, uh, certified organically labeled, and of course the codes that I gave you help to get through that, the conventional being a four-digit code, the organic label being a five-digit code, always beginning with nine, and the actual GMO label itself, which needs to be affixed, um, uh, is a five-digit code beginning with the number eight. And the final issue I wanted to uh, bring to your attention is my old favorite. And I think uh, every time I have a discussion of this type, I would have always mentioned in the past, and I'm certainly going to do it today, I really feel that um, it, it appears that everybody's on the right page with respect to the harm, the potential damage, the potential health issues centered around the GMO issue. Every one of the participants in the KHP family, all the radio talk show hosts here, I can recall hearing them mention issues concerning GMO and that you should be not be consuming GMO for all the reasons that I've specified and maybe even some more. But yet, to think that that kind of um, approach and that the opinion of the talk show host is that GMO is really not a great thing to be consuming. Anything derived from a GMO product should also be suspect. And now I get back to my famous uh, contribution of many years ago having to do with vitamin C. This is an issue, folks. And so if everything that I mentioned before about the GMO foods um, has, and has resonated with you, then you must be consistent. And the talk show hosts of this family need to be consistent and have to warn you that you need to be searching for non-corn-derived because 99.9% .9 of all vitamin C is corn-derived. So you need to be looking for that one-tenth of a percentage point, four or five companies, tops, that have a vitamin C product that is non-corn derived. It's coming from certifiable organically, organic products, which is able to, you can extract vitamin C out of them as well as a, vit as a vitamin C that is extractable from corn. It's just that, number one, the vitamin C is a dud coming from corn, and number two, it's potentially a hazardous substance besides. How can you, on the one hand, be so alert and aware of the GMO issue and discuss how harmful these products could potentially be, and on the other hand, discuss and not even bring up the issue of looking for non-corn-derived vitamin C products? It baffles me. It boggles me. You got to be consistent around here, and if your practitioners are, that's great. And if they're not, well, we'll let you decide what to do. With you. Okay, enough on the vitamin C issue for now. In the interim, though, when I took that commercial break, I did find them, folks. You know them very well. Uh, we've been doing MCG testing in my office now since February 3rd. Had four complete uh, treatment days here, the testing dates. Um, the gentleman who represents the company called Prologic is the only supplier of this device throughout our area, at least. His name is Jerry Singleton. He should be with us right, be with us right now. Let's say good morning. Good morning, Jerry. Welcome back. Hello. Oh, I don't know what happened. Jerry. I had uh, uh, okay, okay. You pushed the button. We're now off well, oh, Yes, I'm with you. Jerry, how you hearing me? Very good? Hello? Yes, Jerry. Good oh, morning. All right, stay on now, Jerry. Don't be pushing speaker or anything crazy like that. Um, it's uh, well, it's such a commonplace thing around here that on Friday, for a number of weeks now, Jerry, we we usually have brought you on the show. It really wouldn't be a Friday show without without having you make 
some contribution because you're, you are that frequent guest. Uh, your device, an MCG device that you, we've used so many times here in the office. I think, what's our total number? You said, is it 82 patients that we have been able to test through, through your device here? I'd have to double check, Dr. Gordy. I'm not sure off the top of my head. But, yeah, I, um, yeah, I think. I we, we've, done, we've, done, we've done quite a few testing, I'm sure, yes. Yeah, the, somehow the number 82 comes to mind, and of course we want that number to continue to advance, and as we move into the future, there'll be other testing dates coming up. We have a unique week coming up, though, Jerry. we got a bunch of people. I don't know actually where they're from. I've never met any of them, but there are 11. I told you 10, Jerry. There are 11 patients. They're coming to my office to be uh, getting an eye, uh, an eye issue resolved, and in the, and in the interim... Um, that, well, Dr. Conjure will be working with the eye issue. I'll be working with all the other zip codes in the body, and you can't, you can imagine uh, the level of prominence that I put on the cardiovascular side of the equation. And I'm um, hopefully your your machine is going to be able to give us the spot check to give us so much information to allow me to either feel good about um, not uh, being overly concerned about their cardiovascular status, or actually. And I think more often than not, especially in an aging population, identifying a considerable amount of coronary artery disease. And for the small amount of time that it takes, I think it's a wonderful spot check. Jerry, what do you think? you think it's going to help us? I think every time we do MCG testing, I think it's been very beneficial to your patients. And uh, I, I think the information we've gathered has been you know, phenomenal. And, uh, it, it, and last week, I, or, I'm sorry, last, the last time that we had tested the patients, even I know we uh, we were very surprised to see the, that, that it was actually very repeatable as well. So uh, pa the patients were surprised, rather. So uh, so it, it, it's been very good to us. I know it's, the, the patients that we tested with, it, it, it provides us an enormous amount of data uh, on their cardiovascular system because as we talked about in the past, our supporting coronary disease, coronary artery disease, doesn't always have symptoms, uh, so I, I definitely have to agree with you. Well, too, this group of people uh, who are coming to my office to be treated by Dr. Condra, a board-certified ophthalmologist, but he's about one of the most different kind of ophthalmologists you'll ever find because he treats uh, non-conventionally. He has alternative approaches that usually do have a tremendous advantage over the conventional ones. In fact, I'd have to say that the reason why people come under his treatment, because his main base now is in Phoenix, Arizona, is that they're not getting the kind of responses with the conventional treatment. Their eye conditions are either staying the same or what could even be worse, they're lessening. And i got to tell you, um, the eye issues that we're pretty much treating involves vasculature. It involves blood vessels. Some of the tiniest little blood vessels in the human body are in the back of that eye, and as you could help somebody's coronary arteries, you can actually help their retinal arteries. And I think the use of uh, your testing is going to be quite illustrative with respect to how much disease they really have. So I'm looking forward to it, Jerry. Sounds good. Hey, we got a, we got a caller on the door. Why don't we let him in the store? Hello. Welcome aboard. You're with Jerry Singleton. Go right ahead. Uh, yes, hi. Good morning. Hi. I was wondering how Jerry's test would measure up with an IMT scan, the in intima media thickness, ah. using ultrasound, is that is that comparable? Um, Jerry, I, I'm pretty familiar with, are you familiar with IMT scan at all? Uh, I, I've, I've heard of it. Okay. I've heard of uh, technology that, that use sonogram technology, but I've not, uh, like echocardiograms and uh, and so forth. I've not, not heard of that one, Dr. You have to explain that one to me. All right, uh, ma'am, I'm pretty much familiar with the, the kind of testing you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, the use of that device is for those arteries very close to the surface of the skin. They are usually found in brachial arteries on uh, the arm and in the forearm. Uh, and they do, the intimal thickening directly correlates uh, because that's where the damage occurs at the intima and it could be one of the earliest signs. It actually could detect the forerunner of pretty advancing and rapidly, uh, rapid installation of, of, of plaque deposition before the plaque deposition occurs. So I think that that is a tremendously good tool. I will say this, it cannot be used at the present time that I'm familiar with in the deeper arteries. And for instance, in the coronary arteries, 
where the MCG device is, is, is really focusing in on. I'm not familiar with the ability to use uh, that type of device to check on the intimal thickening of the coronaries. Are you, are you saying that there is a way that this is done now? Because I'm unfamiliar with it. That's true. Uh, no, no, I'm oh. just looking for an excellent, like a comparison. Okay, I say intimal thickening is a precursor to the development of plaque inside the arteries. It would be one of the earliest signs that something is awry, um, and um, it will follow, the deposition of plaque will follow if, in fact, you're able to catch it early enough. My question would be, uh, once the plaque begins to develop, You've got another way of following it, and the Dopplers will do it, as well as the MCG device if it's in the coronaries. I don't believe that interval thickening is being detected by the MCG testing at all. Okay. Okay? Yeah. All right. Thanks for the explanation. Good question. Thanks for bringing it up. Sure. Bye-bye. Yeah. Yeah, interval thickening, Jerry, is uh, one of the first damages to occur in the lining of an artery, but it precedes all the plaque deposition process. Now, of course... The interval damage remains, it continues, uh, but once it has really flourished, the device that you're being using to measure the intimal thickening isn't even valid anymore because you've got so much plaque on top of the intima that it can't even be detected. But that's, that's how I answer the question and allow you to uh, gain a little bit of knowledge from me for a change, Jerry. It's quite a switch. Great, great. <laughs> quite a switch. All right. Uh, one thing that came up over the last couple of days, because you always lay some new stuff on me, and we were talking just last night about insurance coverages, and I'm actually uh, feeling much better since our discussion because I want our listeners to know just about every insurer in our area does cover in some way, shape, or form this MCG testing. Can you elaborate on that just a little bit? Uh, keep it keep it even. You don't have to get too deep, but let's just say you all insure in some way, shape, or form cover components of this test. So it's right. a well, the, there's a when a medical test comes out, and uh, the, when, I, when FDA when a, I'm sorry when a medic, when a medical test comes out and it's FDA approved um, and it has its own CCT code, uh, which is very different from maybe other testing that is uh, that, that maybe is not handled in that in that fashion or is, isn't as far as down the down the road as ours is in, in the uh, you know the medical acceptance and so forth. Uh, but once it's been established, uh, there's generally once Medicare starts to get their hands on it, we we there's a drafted LCD that uh, outlines the way that the, that the test can be utilized, uh, and it's really the guideline for. Uh, physicians to review prior testing to kind of just have a guideline on uh, their responsibility to the insurers on how the test should be used and followed and so forth. And um, our testing uh, has, a, has a technical component to it and a professional component to it, which is which is typically um, you know how how most most things are dealt with um, anymore. But uh, with with that, uh, we have. The, once we test you on the device, uh, that's considered the technical component, and when the physician has their interaction with you, that's considered the professional component. Uh, and so we have phenomenal coverage uh, in, in Western Pennsylvania. There's, there's certainly some coverage gaps that we're, that we're always challenged with that we're trying to, to fill and so forth. But as far as Medicare and uh, you know, stuff with the Medicaid, the Blue Crosses, you know, we have, have those. Uh, there's a few of the smaller plans that we are trying to, to try to add on and uh, go after, and that's always a challenge. However, uh, I'll, when, I, when, I, when I talk about that, I'm really talking about the technical component of the code. And, uh, you know, the professional component code has, has been around for years and, you know, is utilized with our machine and also other devices. So, you know, the, so really, it's, and the billing really kind of falls into your lap, that's before me. Yeah, that's so... It Sure. The way I guess I want to get across to our listeners is, is that um, the professional component of interacting with me and having a, a discussion with me both before and afterwards, this is always a covered service, Jerry. This is a point that came out. Uh, so the, the uh, technical component, which is the actual test, there may be some pockets where you have to fight a little bit in order to get a maximum amount of reimbursement. But from the practitioner point of view, I'm completely happy 
with whatever is reimbursed, and all insurances reimburse it to some degree. Is that a correct statement? Absolutely. Okay. With that being said, I feel good about telling patients that we, we don't really have to charge them any fees at all. We're going to be able to get reimbursed to some degree. That's going to make uh, this to be uh, uh, something that we do on every person and never really worry about uh, uh, if their insurance is going to cover it. Now, if they have no insurance at all, that's a different matter. Uh, but this is a $50 fee that we charge uh, literally out of po a pocket, which is such a reasonable fee. If you have no insurances, don't deter that from getting this study. It is a reasonable request to uh, ask you to cover $50 fee. Uh, but if you have insurances, there'll be no request by me at least. Jerry, we got bongos in the background. Keep the thing on the road, Jerry. Keep it steering. Keep it going straight. Folks, we're going to end our discussions today. I want you to have a wonderful weekend. Mother's Day on Sunday. I thing on Monday and repeat show with Dr. David Brownstein on thyroid part one. I'll be with you on Wednesday with the king of oregano himself, Dr. Cass Ingram. So long. Have a great weekend.
your host, Dr. Ray Winteski, the healthcare answer man and one of America's premier health professionals. As a chiropractor for over 25 years, Dr. Ray has successfully cared for over 25,000 patients. He has seen just about everything, and that's why he is the healthcare answer man. Good morning, Pittsburgh. Welcome to Healthcare Answer Man on Pittsburgh's Nutrition Network, KHP 6.0 AM. I am your host, Dr. Ray Wisniewski, the Healthcare Answer Man. My job is always to coach you, to guide you, and to inspire you to live your life to your full life potential. So whatever your problem is, if you're suffering with you know, heart problems, cancer, diabetes, you just want to lose some weight, you want to... Um, Build up your immune system. With every problem is, I'm here to help you gain victory in your health. Your health problems are always super important to me on the show, and that's why we're here to help you overcome them with some really simple and effective action steps. And that's why you can give us a call right now at 412-825-6262. 412-825-6262. You can also visit us on the web. NutritionAnswerMan.com. That's NutritionAnswerMan.com. Yeah, today we've got some uh, great specials, and we're going to go over those. Our specials are all uh, about sleep. You know, it's all about sleep. And I'll tell you what, one of the things, I just had a uh, patient testimonial okay. yesterday. We're going to start playing some of the te testimonials. You know, I have, uh, I'm super high tech, but 